All right, so the first thing we're going to show is the report itself. This is called the Individual Student Progress Report, and we've just grabbed a student at random off of our reports website at NWEA, and we will get you the instructions for how to get this for your entire class. And there's a very easy way to print this report for every student in your class with essentially two or three clicks of your mouse. What you have on this report is how the student has done from the first time they ever took the MAP test. And it's all subjects on one page. Well, in this case, two, because we also assess this student who is in high school with the um, science MAP test. So you have math, reading, language usage, and then down here some explanatory notes. And in this case, this student also has science results, so we have general science and then the concepts and processes in science. The next part of this report is the graph format of it, which looks like this. And it's the same information as we just saw on the text format, but this shows this nice multicolor graph, and I'll go through that also in just a minute. So, first of all, if we look up here, we have math in the upper left corner. What it'll show is at the bottom, this is the first time the student took the MAP test. It was spring of 07. So you see S, 07, then fall, then winter, and so forth. All the way up to fall of 2012, which is always going to show up at the top of each of these lists. This student is currently in grade 9. This is the student's score range, so her score was a 241 with a range around it or a confidence interval, as you can see, but the score is in bold. So this means if the student took the test repeatedly, we're pretty confident her score would always fall within this range, but this is exactly where she scored this fall. District average. This shows what our district average was for our ninth graders in math this fall. The norm group average is what's typical performance across the entire nation and all the partner districts for NWEA in the fall in ninth grade. So district average was 223, norm group average was 234. Next you'll see student growth and typical growth. Student growth and typical growth are only reported from fall to spring. So if you look at last spring's results, this student's growth was three, three RIT score points from fall, fall of 2011 to spring of 2012. Typical grain is four points. So the student's percentile range is listed here, and that's again a confidence interval. If she took the test repeatedly, we're quite confident her score would fall somewhere in between the 59th and the 72nd percentile. But for this particular test event, her percentile rank was 66. The thing about percentile ranks is this. 50 is right in the middle, or average. But there's a range around that middle that is kind of an average range. And it goes a little below the average of 50 to a little above it. If we see a percentile rank of 66 or, yes, yeah, 66, that indicates that her performance is above average. So if you're wondering, what does this 241 mean? How is she doing? She's doing quite well. She's performing above average in math. Parents may ask, well, typical growth is four, but she only grew three points. You can say, you know what? Her score was above average in both events. She's doing fine. Yes, maybe um, she lost a little over the summer or forgot a few things, but we're quite confident that she's going to catch up quite nicely. Then you move on to reading. All of the information in reading remains the same. You just ex are explaining it for reading. The thing that's different here is down here at the bottom you'll also see a Lexile range. Lexile ranges are always reported in 150 point increments. So her range is down here 1187 to 1317. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, if you look up here, her reading is quite strong. Um, her score was at an 85th percentile. She had a 237 in reading. Her growth was 11 from fall of 12 to spring of 12, where typical is two points. She's doing very well. And if you look down here in all the areas of reading, she ranged from average to high in terms of her reading skills. 
We don't really teach reading, we teach the skills involved with reading, and hers are all quite strong. So that's a reference for Lexile, but if you want to know exactly what it means, you can go to Lexile.com and you can actually create or generate lists of reading materials that are aligned with this reading level. If parents ask, how do I use this, I say, well, this indicates a range of reading materials and indicates what kind of support she would need to be successful with those. So, if you want to do independent reading at home, I would tell parents you choose materials that are at 1187 or below. Um, 1317, that indicates, well, she might have some success with that, but she might need a lot of support to be successful with material at that level. And again, if you look at Lexile.com, and we can put some um, resources for that on our website as well, or look at their website, you can see what kind of materials are at that level. And then you get to language usage down here in the lower left, and again, this, the pieces of information remain the same, but they're in the area of language usage. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, in this particular case, this student also took the science test. Um, she took it in winter of 12 and spring of 12. We only tested some students with science last year, mostly at the middle school, so you won't see this on most reports, but if you do, science is broken into two areas. There's general science and concepts and processes. And again, you can look at the student score, RIT score, um, the district average, the norm group average, and then the student's percentile rank. And all of that, you would explain those in the exact same way that you explained it for math, reading, and language usage. There is a nice explanatory notes section on these reports down here in the lower right. Each one of those explains the pieces of information that are on that report. So you can also show that to parents for their reference later on, and maybe they'll say, I don't quite remember what this particular number meant. The information is there. It's pretty basic. They may have more questions, but that's a good starting point for them. And next, we have the graph format of the same information. This tends to be the one that is easiest to discuss with parents. What you'll see on this is you can print it in black and white or you can print it in color as we have here. Here you see the test events from the first time the student tested over on the left to the most recent time they tested all the way over on the right. What you want to see is exactly what you see here. You want to see an upward trend. This student, like many, has some ups and downs in her pattern of performance. I'm not really worried about that. Um, we do see that from time to time. Why does that happen? Well, a lot of things can happen. Maybe you have a little bit of summer loss in terms of math skills or reading skills. The student may be having a bad day on the day that they took the test, and maybe they just weren't focusing well, maybe they didn't feel well. But when you see an upward trend from the left to the right, and the student is performing well in comparison to their peers, that's not something really to worry about. So here's the pattern for this student. Every student's scores will show up in the dark blue. The norm group average, which is national average, shows up in light blue. And then our district average shows up in orange. And the other thing you'll see on this report is it'll give you a growth projection from this fall to next spring where in terms of other students her age and her grade level starting at the same point in the fall where did they typically end up in the spring so this will typically be an upward trend so that's the minimum amount of growth that we would expect from this student from this fall to next spring other than that the content remains the same Parents may ask, what do you plan to do with this information? And you can say, let's look at reading, for example. This student's scores were high in most of the goal areas, but only average in main idea and details. My response to a parent would be, I'm going to work with this student on, on the particular goal area of main idea and supporting detail. Other than that, she's doing very, very well.